All right, hey, hey, guys, thank you for watching the second video in this little Ultimate Nightmare Guide. Happy here, really appreciate it. I'm trying to make the content, I'm doing my best, I'm sort of new to all this, so I just really, really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Now, I'm going to take some time here to talk about the cards, but not what the best card is. Not, how to, not like, not any of that mumbo-jumbo nonsense, none of the glam. Like, we're going to get into this, like, the real heart of it all. I'm going to categorize the cards in a way that I think at least makes sense to me. In a way in how you should be building a deck and what makes a good deck. And I see a lot of these other decks on the on the YouTubes, and let me tell you, this is a challenge. This is a fight in words, all right? A lot of these content creators, I think, I think they're making, I think they're giving you garbage decks. I think they're giving you guys some bad decks, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna talk about the basic way that we're gonna categorize the cards, and then I'm gonna give you the principles of how to build a good deck and what you're looking for and things like that. So I, in my last video, I talked about some basic principles of Left 4 Dead: uh, good positioning, good pacing, um, grenades, 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 grenades are the best thing in the world. Grenades are super meta, the only truly meta thing in Nightmare, I think. And then our resources. Again, our resources are health, stamina, copper, bullets, and items. He uh, grenades, healing items, quick items, etc. Right? Those five things, generally. And so the, the card uh, breakdown that we have here is going to be resource generation, resource quality, resource quantity, or resource plus, our gimmicks and quality of life cards, and then some win conditions. So resource generation is essentially a card that when X, Y, or Z happens, we get a resource. Fire in the hole. When you throw an offensive accessory, you gain 20 temporary health and 20 move speed. We do a thing and we get health for it. Adrenaline fueled, right? When you kill an enemy, gain 10 stamina, right? When we do a thing, we get a resource in return. Inspiring Sacrifice, right? When a teammate goes down, everyone else gets health, right? When something happens, we get a resource in return. These are the resource generation cards, right? All the support scavenger cards, or all the scavenger cards, battle less, you, you know, face your fears, money grubbers, highwaymen, mugger, hazard pay, right? Share the wealth. These are all cards that, when we use them, they sort of infinitely generate some sort of resource over time, whenever something happens. The next is going to be resource quality. Resource quality, right? So this is, this is going to not add to the quantity of our resource, but it's going to make the resource that we do have uh, perform better. So for example, movement speed, right? We don't have extra stamina, but when we do spend our stamina, we go further, we go faster. Right, movement speed, so damage. When we spend our bullets, they do more. Damage resistance, the health that we have will last longer, right? Our health becomes more valuable, higher in quality, right? Healing efficiency, when we use a healing accessory, it's more effective. Grenade training, when we use a grenade, it does more. You know what I mean, right? So it's not adding to our quantity of resources, but adding to the quality of it. And then, of course, resource plus is the opposite, right? It, this is going to be our plus stamina, plus ammo capacity, plus health, plus grenade pouches, etc., right? And the last thing, if our resource, let's if we were to view our resources as like our cardinal stats, like an RPG, our strength, our dex, our constitution, uh, these these quality of life cards are sort of like gimmicks, I like to call them. These are our skills. These are the cards that are going to let you, you know, pickpocket the armor off of the town guard. You know what I mean? You've all been there, right? It's going to be reload speed, aim speed, swap speed, revive speed. Uh, breakout is like a gimmick, right? Like you get an ability to do something. You don't typically, you don't, can't typically do this, but you get an ability to do so. Uh, movement speed when you're shooting, screwdriver for use speed. There's a lot of speed going on, you know what I mean? Accuracy, stamina regen extra life down in front we we get a bell we get an ability we become invulnerable to friendly fire and we can't give friendly fire when crouching power reload trauma resistance an extra primary weapon infinite secondary weapon etc and there's some there's more cards that sort of fall into this category 
but these are the cards that are going to make it more convenient or easier for you to spend your resources, right? They don't directly affect your resources. They don't make them bigger. They don't make them better. But they sort of make things a little bit easier, more convenient. You know what I'm saying? Right? So these are the four categories of cards, right? Resource generation, resource quality, resource quantity, and like our gimmicks and quality of life, like these sort of weird oddball cards. Win condition, though. What is what, what do I mean by win condition? Now, if you play Hearthstone or Magic the Gathering, you'll be familiar with this term. Every deck is built with a win condition in mind. And um, everyone is doing this, though they don't look at the, their deck and go, oh, hey, here's my win condition. Right? But a win condition for me, as I'm going to explain it here, is a combination of cards that lets you do a super cool thing. Right. Super cool thing. Everyone's doing it. Everyone's building decks this way. Everyone's posting decks on YouTube that example that in some way or another. But I'm just going to I'm just going to simplify what we call it. It's our win condition. It's the whole point of our deck. It's the it's it's the thing we're sort of building up to, right? And so so it's any combination of cards. Hazard pay and grenade pouch is just like two cards that synergize very well. You get extra grenades right out the gate right from level one but I think a better example really is marked for death and shredder right when you ping a target your entire team gets extra 10% damage versus the highlighted target each bullet on shredder causes the target to intake increased damage so with these two cards you can ping a target and then you start shooting it now your entire team if they focus fire with you it's a 25% damage boost, right? Two cards that sort of synergize and do a thing together. Inspiring sacrifice, medical professional, and needs of the many, right? We we have life. When we get downed, we trigger inspiring sacrifice. When they die, or when we heal them with a with a first aid kit, and we or we defib them, they get their life back, so they can trigger inspiring sacrifice again, right? It's just a combination of cards that sort of do a thing. They synergize together, right? When you go on your corporate retreat, you talk about synergy. These are the combinations of cards that accomplish some sort of extraordinary effect. And it can be as simple as just accessory damage, accessory damage, accessory damage, and then bomb squad, right? And now your grenades will, will two-shot ogres or whatever, right? It can be as simple as that. It can be as simple as just stacking all kinds of damage cards together. Or like face your fears and numb. Great little two card combination if you're going to be a melee weapon user, right? You get, you generate infinite temporary health so long as you can kill things, and then you get 15% damage resistance because you always have temporary health, etc. Right? This, I hope this makes sense, right? The win condition is a combination of cards that creates the the thing that your deck does. And then everything else built around it, I'll talk about it in a second. Because we'll talk about the last one, Copper Scavenger and Money Grubbers, right? Final example. Or Copper Pile Spawn, which means you can trigger Money Grubbers more often, right? Etc, etc, etc. So we have all these things. Like, why, why did I take the time to categorize the cards that are already categorized but in a different way? Here's why. When you are building a deck... We want resource generation first, right? So I believe that every single deck should have resource generation in it. Act specific cards. And then a win condition. Those three things. Now, whether you have some resource quality or resource quantity and some quality of life cards, you can sort of mix those in. But those are the three things that every single deck needs. Resource generation, act specific cards, which I haven't talked about yet, and a win condition. Now let's just make a deck and I'll show you what I mean. I love hazard pay. Obviously, money grubbers is the best money card. I hope they nerf it. It's ridiculous. But I one thing that money grubbers, or one thing I don't like about money grubber, or two things actually. One, you don't get extra money on level one right on one one on a resurgence when you're first starting off you're first beginning your play you don't have the extra money yet. you don't get the benefit from money grubbers until map two 
Now that's one hell of a benefit, but you don't get to use anything until map 2, basically. Hazard pay. With the 250, we can spend that money immediately. We begin the match with 500 bucks. Double grenade pouch, right? Double grenade pouch. So, when I talk about every deck needs resource generation, we look at a card like Hazard Pay. Right, look at all these cards that we can run, right? If you're going to run some of these resource generation cards, you're going to get the most value out of them the earlier you put them in your deck in the campaign, right? The more you... Like, if you have Offensive Scavenger on board one of the campaign, now for the entire campaign, you get uh, every time you enter a new map, you get extra opportunities to gather resources. The reason why I have Hazard Pay here is it's just, I'm going to tell you a secret, other than Money Grubbers, this is the second best money card. Second best money card, because you get to spend the money immediately. Alright, so every deck needs resource generation. But every deck also needs act specific cards, right? So let's say we are making a deck for who, wh whoever, right? We're 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 Jim, we're Jim, but we're Act One. We're Jim and we're Act One, right? We're do we're going through Act One. We have hazard pay for our, for our resource generation. We have double grenade pouch because I'm going to emphasize this right now. This is the best card in the game. I'm going to make a video about the top 15 cards, and then some of the worst cards. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, Double Grenade Pouch is the best card in the game for Nightmare Mode. Hands down, far and away, the best card in the game is, is Double Grenade Pouch. Every single deck should have Double Grenade Pouch as their second or third card. And what I mean by that is... When I'm going to be showing my decks and explaining deck building, things like that, assume that we're always going to be picking the leftmost card as we go through the campaign. That's typically how I view my deck building. So when I have my card right here, I'm, thinking, I'm picking this literally in the map one. But if you don't have hazard pay as your resource generation, you won't have enough money to buy the grenades, so... Obviously you can play around with that and use different resource generation cards. Maybe you double up, maybe you have two resource generation cards, but here, this is the simple example that I'm showing here, the one example that I'm showing here. And I love this. I, I have Hazard Pay and Double Grenade Pouch on literally every deck that I make, because I think it's the strongest two cards you can have at the start of a, of a match. But we're playing Jim, Act 1. The next map, right, card 3, is Blood Tunnel. Then it's Pain Train. Then it's The Crossing. So I, I, I would like to think to myself, oh man, you know what, like, the crossing's a real pain in the butt, like, like that's the first checkpoint. If we can beat the crossing, that would be amazing. I get the first checkpoint and I can keep going on with my playthrough. So let's say, let's start preparing for the crossing, because that map is, uh, like, the first hurdle that everyone really struggles with. So I would suggest to a lot of players, let's do this. Let's do this. On Blood Tunnel, we'll get Run Like Hell. Pain Train, we'll get Superior Cardio. And then on the Crossing, we'll get Cross Trainers, right? And these are sort of three cards. Like, right, We're not speedrunning it, but we need to be fast enough and have enough stamina to, to sprint to the boat, and then off the boat, and then back onto the boat, and then back off the boat again. So, but, but, right, so these are our act-specific cards. Because these cards are set up specifically to help us deal with certain levels on the act. Maybe you don't like this, maybe you can cut out cross trainers you put something else, right? But essentially, here's our act specific cards. The next the next mission is going to be clean sweep. And if we're running double grenade pouch, then eventually getting bomb squad at some point in time makes sense. I like getting bomb squad around clean sweep because it's around this part of the level that it's going to be more common for you to get ferocious mutations, which gives them more health. So let's keep our grenade damage in line with their health so we can one-shot them more often and etc. Right? But we haven't begun working on a win condition yet, right? We haven't begun doing that. What 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 should our be what should our win condition be? Maybe it can be as simple as let's just let's just do damage, right? Let's just be Jim and we'll do damage. 
and etc. And etc. So after Bomb Squad, right, we got our foundation, our resource generation, our OP double grenade pouch. We got three class specific cards. And with this extra stamina and movement speed, maybe we can be pretty decent snipers now, right? So we got our bomb squad to keep our grenades relevant. So let's start stacking the damage. We'll get stock pouch. Maybe we'll get uh we'll get we'll get hyper focused. Alright, we get hyper focused, right? We ADS, we can't move, we'll shoot, and then we'll un ADS and we'll jump away. Etc. 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 Or gym, we're never gonna take damage anyways. Then we'll grab glass cannon. Then we'll grab glass cannon. Uh, map 10 is the diner. Maybe we want an extra grenade. Maybe we want an extra grenade. In fact, I think, uh, what is it, 8 is the bar. Let's get an extra grenade, right? Because we want to hold out for as long as possible. With good positioning, we can kill any ridden that we need to. But when a mutation shows up, we're going to need to grenade them because we don't want to be displaced from our solid, defendable position. You know what I'm saying? Having an extra grenade slot for the bar will result in us being able to hold out where we're at for longer. Because we'll have more solutions to dealing with mutations when they show up. Then we'll get our hyper-focused. Then we'll get our glass cannon for the diner. Now we're on to bad seeds. And maybe you're thinking about Hell's Bells coming up, right? Here's some more act-specific cards. Hell's Bells is coming up, and you go, oh man, you know, like, Bad Seeds is kind of a big map. You gotta run around a lot. But we're gonna need to do some, some window boarding up, you know what I'm saying, at Hell's Bells. So let's get extra use speed. Plus a little bit of extra stamina. Not a big deal, right? A little bit of extra stamina. Maybe we'll get Patient Hunter now to continue with our with our win condition of just hitting big bullet damage shots or etc. Abandoned. We'll get Silver Bullets. And then sort of an Axe specific card. Canned Goods, right? So in the final arena, Rolling Thunder, we don't really have any need for stamina anymore. If, you, if your team has to sprint around and run around and jump and shoot and kill things and do circles around the map, like you're you're not gonna <laughs> you're not gonna be rolling thunder on nightmare mode playing it that way. It's just it's non-stop zombies, mutations. You need to be able to hold your ground and stay alive and keep the field cannon person constantly doing the field cannon. You're pretty much doing that map three versus the environment. Because one player literally should just be dedicated to the cannon. So let's get extra health so we can be more durable and etc. And that's it, right? So again, we look at this deck and we have a little bit of resource generation. We have the bare minimum, one card. We have three act specific cards to help us get through the crossing. Because I assume when you're playing Nightmare Road, you want to live so that you can get your Zwat's card or whatever, right? Your Zwat. Your Zwat. So, run like hell, superior card here on cross trainers. This will also give us all the stamina we need and movement speed we need for pretty much the entire run. Bomb squad sort of synergizes with a grenade pouch, and then we and then we get our stock pouch, extra grenade. Is again right? It's sort of like an act specific card here because we have to hold out here at the bar, but also hold out at the diner later on. Hyper focus to keep on with our th with our damage build. Glass cannon. Screwdriver to prepare us for to prepare us for uh, Hell's Bells. Maybe we switch this, right? Maybe, you know, Bad Seeds is a nice big open map. You're going to be standing in the middle of a field a lot of the times or running around. So, Patient Hunter, probably pretty good there. Then Screwdriver for Hell's Bells. Silver Bullets for Abandoned, just for more damage. Canned Goods because now we need to stay put and hold our ground. Right, so that's a very general sense. I'll just repeat myself. It's because this, this is about the it. This is about the end of the deck building video. Every deck should have resource generation, act specific cards, and a win condition. And the win condition is we're sort of always building up to the win condition and sprinkling in the act specific cards. 
and then our deck always begins with some sort of resource generation. That's where, like the foundation of our deck. And there's other examples of what could be done and how it could work and what can be successful, really. So thank you guys for watching so much. I really appreciate it. I um, hope this helps you to understand and look at the card system a little bit better. And maybe inspire you to look at look for your own combination of cards and come up with your own deck ideas and etc. Uh, so thank you guys so much for, for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the future.